morning, good afternoon, and thank you for joining us here for another segment of Wildlife Wednesday. My name is Rachel, and today I'm going to be going down to Crow's Rehabilitation Grounds to meet up with Bree Frankel about how Crow takes care of juvenile rabbits. Good afternoon and welcome back to Wildlife Wednesday here at Crow. My name is Brianna, I'm the Wildlife Rehabilitation Manager and we are here today to talk about the various rabbit species we get at Crow. Now we get two specific types, we get the Eastern Cottontail and the Marsh Rabbit. Typically on Sanibel and around marshy areas you will see marsh rabbits as opposed to cottontails and more in Fort Myers, the inland areas, we get a lot of cottontails. Now they come in for various reasons all throughout the year. During baby season they come in for potentially being orphaned or abducted from their nest. Sometimes they are also attacked by different types of predators, which can include domestic pets if you don't know that there's a bunny rabbit nest in your yard. During baby season here at Crow, which for bunnies can be all year long, we always get calls about baby bunnies that people think have been orphaned, that their mom hasn't come back, they've been watching all day and there's been no sign of a mom. But it turns out for rabbits, the mom only comes back to the nest twice a day, at dawn and dusk. And normally when she makes her nest, she does it in a place that has a lot of human activity during the day, which automatically predator proofs the nest. So she will sometimes make her nest in your garden beds because she knows that you're working there during the day. If you have pets that go out during the day in a busy dog yard, for example, she might put her nest there because those babies don't have a smell. So it's difficult for the dogs to find them, but the dogs offer any type of assistance in keeping predators away from that yard. Also commonly, they will make nests on playgrounds and construction yards and that type of thing, which isn't the best place for a nest, but mom knows exactly where she stored those babies and knows that they'll be protected during the day, even though it's not an ideal situation. So typically what we tell people is go ahead and put that baby right back in the nest if it looks nice and healthy, keep an eye out around dawn and dusk, and that's when you'll most likely see mom come to and from the nest. Granted, she only comes for a short period of time, to simulate the babies, feed them, and then she'll take right back off. So commonly when those babies come in and we tell people, you know, it's okay to put it back in the nest, they don't actually know what to look for. Now a rabbit nest is not a burrow. It does not tunnel down into the ground. In a lot of situations, it's just a very slight depression in the earth, just a very slight depression. A lot of times mom will pull her fur and put some of her fur in that nest. She'll also pull a little bit of leaf litter, some debris from around your yard. And a lot of times there'll be nests in those yellow circular patches in your yard because that grass is not actually Actually alive anymore but it makes the perfect suitable cover-up for a rabbit's nest so sometimes all you're looking for is a little bit of dirt that has been moved around a little clutter of leaf litter that type of thing and that does qualify as a suitable nest for those babies so how do you determine if you found babies whether mom is there still taking care of them or if she hasn't been back? Well, the first thing to know is that if you touch a baby bunny, its mom will come back if she's there. It is a complete myth that if you touch wild animals, even with your bare hands, that the parents will abandon those babies and never come back. I kind of say it's like if you lost your kid in a supermarket and the manager brought it back over to you, you wouldn't say, no, I don't want my kid anymore. And it's the same for wildlife species. So a couple ways to check if mom is still there. If if the baby has minimal fur, um, if it looks like a newborn, if its eyes are closed, you can pick the baby up, turn it on its back, and check its belly. If it has recently been fed, you will see a white milk line that does encase the whole stomach there. You know, it's got a belly full of milk, and it will often look like it is oval in shape or it will span across the entire abdomen section of that baby. It does look white in color. It is very obvious that it is a milk line. And if you see that, then you know that baby is currently being taken care of and you should leave it there. Now, if you're really not sure, you don't see a milk line because it's middle of the day, maybe all the food is digested, you can go ahead and you can make um, a crisscross shape with sticks over top of that nest. So as mom comes back to the nest, she will disrupt those sticks so you know that she's coming. You can also alternatively take any type of baking soda, flour, anything white and slightly powdery, sprinkle it right around the edges of the nest, all the way around, and at dawn and dusk you can check to see if you see little mom footprints coming and going from the nest. 
If mom hasn't come back, then we absolutely need to get those babies to the clinic about 24 hours after we realize she hasn't been there, even sooner if we're very concerned for the health of those babies. Now, bunnies are very stressful animals, both as babies and as adults, so we have to take extra precautions when it comes to their care. They are secluded in a very quiet staff-only room in the hospital so that there's minimal noise to stress them out during their patient care. Now, some of these babies come in with their eyes closed and they do require feedings. Now, we represent replicate mom's feeding schedule. We will feed them twice a day. We will fill their bellies and we will make sure that they have enough food and calories to get them through the day. Now we do feed them in the morning and in the late afternoon or early evening depending on if they're here at the clinic or potentially in foster care which is wonderful that we are able to have a foster mom who cares for our bunnies very closely. Now as these bunnies grow they go through a milk phase just like human babies they'll drink a lot of milk and then you start to transition them onto some softer foods. So for bunnies in the wild we utilize various grasses that we find out in nature we utilize all the greens that we have here around the hospital grounds and then also as they get bigger we may offer some type of oxbow supplement which is a great herbivore supplement for just helping with calories helping to increase their weight and helping them become a little bit more independent any type of baby animal is prone to habituation in a captive setting. So just like we do for other animals, we combine them to make sure they're raised with species of their own or very similar species so they don't see humans as friends. We do the same thing for our baby rabbits. We will combine them into big cohorts, we call them, so that there's multiple babies within the same hutch as they grow up. This way, they grow up knowing that they're rabbits, they grow up learning from each other, sometimes there's some bunnies that learn faster than others, and they really help facilitate the younger bunnies in eating on their own. So to avoid any type of habituation, we get them in together as soon as possible. Even if they're not siblings, we will raise bunnies from different nests together. They do great together and they do much better when they have other babies to be with as opposed to just one individual caretaker and they don't realize that they're bunnies. Thank you, Bree, for sharing all of that wonderful information with our audience members about those cute little bunnies that we love seeing out in the wild. And just as a reminder from last week, Crow's Taste of the Islands passports are available for purchase. So visit our website for more details. Have a good day. Join Fox 4 for the 39th Taste of the Islands, benefiting the clinic for the rehabilitation of wildlife. Reimagined and all November long. All you need is a taste passport, available at any of these locations. Proceeds ensure Crow's continued success, providing the highest quality care and treatment of injured, ill, and orphaned wildlife through state-of-the-art veterinary care. It's the 39th Taste of the Islands, all November. Visit fox4now.com slash crow for details.